we still have two alternatives left, for example, 6.7, which means that we still have one more round to go. So this is the final match. Okay, so now we're going to be comparing alternative 1 okay, against alternative 3. Same process, we need to fill out our incremental cash flow table. The only difference here is that we have different lives. So first of all, let me uh, put alternative 1 as alternative A, and then alternative B in this case will be alternative 3 because it is the one with the higher investment. Okay, but going back to the different lives, we won't be able to do the shortcut in which you put uh, year 0 and then years 1 through 8 or 1 through n because for the LCM you need to repeat the cycles. So you may go back to chapter 4 or also refer to example 6.5 in this chapter to see how you will be dealing with different lives in the incremental cash flow tables. Okay, so this is for different lives. Okay, so we need to find the LCM because remember it's it's based on the present worth. So the LCM in this case for four and eight will be eight years. Okay. When the cycles overlap Okay, so here for alternative 1, we would need to repeat it twice. And then alternative 3, which is one cycle. Okay, but when the two cycles overlap for alternative 1, you will have also overlapping cash flows. So that's why we cannot just do years 1 through 8. So you would have to do everything individually. So you would have year 0, 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And if it helps, you may also draw the cash flow diagram uh, if it's easier for you to visualize how the cycles are, uh, when they start, when they end, etc. Okay, so let's start with alternative A. Remember that we must repeat the cycle twice, because okay, it's four years. So let me just put as a side note here that this would be year zero, year one, two, three, four, and then we know that the last year of the first cycle becomes year zero of the second cycle. So then you would have again zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we know that the P, or the initial investment for A, is minus 80,000, and it's in year zero of the first cycle, but you must also put it in year zero of the second cycle. You don't put it here because you're not starting a third cycle. So only two cycles, you must have this twice as well. Then we have our A's. A starts in year one. So we have the minus 28,000 plus 61,000 equals to 33. Here we will have the same 33,000, 33,000. We still have it here because it's the end of the first cycle, so it's year four. So you must have it here. Plus 33,000. Okay, so if we add these up, be minus 47. Then we continue adding the 33,000. Okay, and then well, remember that in this example we don't have a salvage value, but if we did then you would have to have the salvage value in years 4 and in years 8. Okay, So now let's go with alternative, we're done with alternative 1, let's move on to alternative 3. We have the initial investment minus 145,000. We combine the A's minus 16,000 plus 51,000 into 35. And here we just keep on adding our 35 because we don't have any repeated cycles and we don't have a salvage value so the remainder of the years will all be 35,000 
and then we get the difference between the two so in the first one we would get minus 65,000 then here and here plus 2,000 same same and here it will be different because you will do uh, you will have 82 thousand and then these are all the same 2,000 2,000 2,000 and 2,000 okay so this is these are the values that we will be using in our present worth equation we have the 65 we have 2,000 and then we also have this one that's different okay so we know that this is year zero of the incremental cash flow column this will be P then you see that there's 2000 in every year so this will be our A but remember that A has to happen every year including here so this one you have to break it down into two amounts you have to take out the A and then the remaining 80,000 is going to be an F in year 4 because remember that you have to find P in the next step okay so that's why you're gonna do P and then find P given A okay, you have the A here but then this this 80,000 you also have to move it to P okay so this one this amount right here is the one that you will be inserting into your present worth equation okay so actually not this one this one you break it up into the a and the remainder also just a side note here if you were to have a salvage value you would do the same thing in year eight okay so here we don't have a salvage value that's why year eight is the same as the rest but if you had salvage values then this uh, year right here will also be different and you would be doing something similar Okay, so now let's set up our present worth equation. Okay, we have minus 65. Do not need to convert it to P because it's already in P. Plus 2000, find P given A. Delta I star, how many A's do you have? You have eight of them. Okay and then plus because this is positive plus 80,000 that you need to move to P so it's going to be find P given F at Delta I star and this is four years away from P Kay. you have your equation and then you must do again the trial and error and interpolation Kay. so for this you will get delta i star equal to 10.1 percent one thing that i want to point out here is that when you're doing your trial and error depending on the numbers that you choose you probably will already be able to tell if it's going to be greater than or less than the minimum attractive rate of return given to you in the problem. For the purpose of the class, I want to see all of the process for the trial and error, which numbers you selected, how you are interpolating using the formula, etc. Okay. The only time when you do not have to do that is in case your uh, trial and error it's already going very high so we only have tables up to 30 percent if you find out that you're going above or you're already in 30 percent and you cannot find the uh, the other number you know remember you need a positive point and a negative point so if you still cannot find it and you're running out of tables then you may just say oh I already know that it's gonna be higher or it's gonna be lower than the minimum attractive rate of return so you may skip that step Okay, but other than that, I would like to see all of the work. Okay, so now here we are at a point where you can compare it already. 
10.1% against the 12% minimum attractive rate of return. This is less, so we eliminate alternative 3, okay, which is the one with the higher investment, or alternative B, and alternative 1 is the survivor. Okay, so in this case, there are, well, let me eliminate alternative three. Okay, we, are, we are only left with alternative one. So there is no more alternatives to compare. So then this is the end of the problem the end of the problem and alternative one wins the championship okay so just also a side note so here let me just circle it but this is our winner uh, do nothing would be treated as the other alternative so do nothing may win the competition as well but in this case, we eliminated it uh, on the first match, the fir first round, and alternative one was our winner.